there is a composite beam which is made of wood block with the dimension of B and H and this is strengthened by adding two steel shapes on the sides. The L shape are standard steel shape of 4 by 3 by 5 8 of inch. This beam has a length of 5 yard. The force is acting at the middle of that. Modulus of elasticity of wood and steel are 1800 KSI and 30,000 KSI. The allowable stress in the steel and wood are 16 KSI and 1.3 KSI. And we want to know what would be the maximum load that we can apply on this beam. So first of all, I know that this is a composite beam and I need to transform that into a section that is made from just one material. Is it easier in this case to transform the section into entire steel or into entire wood? How many wood components do we have in this problem? Just one. How many steel components do we have? Two, but those two are consisting of four rectangles in total. So if you want to convert steel to wood, you need to convert four rectangles into wood. And that makes the problem more complicated. So it would be easier if we go and convert it into steel. We are going to convert a weaker material to stronger material, so n factor should be smaller than 1. Modulus of elasticity of wood as the numerator and steel as the denominator. And that would give us 0 0.06. I will use that later. Let's keep it here and try to determine the shear and moment diagrams. Um, the reaction force on each side would be half of P. On the left side, we go up by P over 2. It's going to remain constant all the way to the middle point. Then there is a jump by the magnitude of P downward. And then that remains constant all the way to the other end. So that would be <coughs> shear diagram. Moment at the left side is 0. It is going to increase linearly all the way to the middle of the beam and then decrease linearly all the way to the other end. And how much would be the maximum moment? That would be the area under the shear on, on half of the beam. So P over 2 multiplied by L over 2, that would be PL over 4. This is the maximum moment in this problem. All right, I'm just going to write this down here and write maximum moment in terms of length. I'm going to convert 5 yards into inches. That would be 45 multiplied by P pound inch. That would be the maximum moment that we expect to see in this beam as a function of P. Now we get to the tricky part, how to determine the section properties for the transform section. But what is the shape of the transform section? We are going to replace wood part with steel. So I'm going to change that B and replace that with N multiplied by B. So this would be the shape of the section after transformation. The width of the section at the middle part has decreased. The new width would be N multiplied by B. Okay. Now I need to determine the section properties for this problem. First, let me write down the values for that transformed wood at the middle part. Area would be the transformed width, which is N multiplied by B multiplied by height. The transformed width would be 0.12 inches, multiply that by 10 inches, which is the height of the section, would give us 1.2 squared inch. That is the area of the transformed part. Moment of inertia is base height cubed over 12. For base, I'm going to use the transformed width of the section, which is 0.12 inch, height is 10, and divided by 12, that would give us 10 inch to the fourth. The distance of centroid of the transformed section to top would be half of the height, which is shown by red here. So that would be h over 2, or 5 inches. Now we get to the part that is sometimes confusing. I need to determine the properties for that L-shape steel shape. The section properties could be read from the table. Uh, first of all, we need to read the area, 3.89. Mm, that's easy. But for moment of inertia, there are two values here, Ix and Iy. Also, we need to know where is the location of the centroid in this shape. I'm going to zoom into this figure. The distance of centroid to the sides is given by x, y, x bar and y bar, or x and y in this figure. Which one should I use for solving this problem? This is the tricky part, and I want you to think about this. So I'm going to pause here for a few seconds. Think 
discuss, share the ideas. What should I read from this table? Should I read IX or IY? Should I use X or Y value for the centroid? What is the moment of inertia that you are interested in this problem? Do we need to determine moment of inertia about the horizontal or vertical? We need to use the right hand rule. Put your hand downward following the direction of that force and face it toward one of those supports. Doesn't matter in this case. What would be the direction of thumb in this case? That is going to be outward from the surface, right? So the axis that we have the moment about would be outward from the surface. Now, look at this cross-section area. What is that axis? That would be horizontal. So the axis of interest that we need to determine the moment of inertia about that axis is horizontal. Or you can have this rule of thumb. When you have a beam and the force is in a vertical direction, the axis of interest for the moment is always horizontal. Okay? Look at this one. The longer edge is horizontal and the shorter edge is vertical, right? Now look at this one. The longer edge is vertical and the shorter edge is horizontal, right? So X and Y that we have in this table are opposite to X and Y that we have on this shape. We have the coordinate system flipped compared to the system, shape that we have here. Now for this problem, I need to read two values in addition to area, which we already did. Moment of inertia about the y-axis and distance of y-axis to the side, which is shown by x. All right, now let's go to this table and read those values. So this is 4 by 3 by 5 eighth of inch. Moment of inertia is 2.85 about the y-axis. And distance is 0 0.867 inches. So this is the shape of the transform section. That x is shown by blue here, which is the distance of centroid of each of those L shapes to the top. The distance of centroid of that pink shape or the transformed wood to the top is h over 2. All right, y bar is sum of a multiplied by y divided by sum of areas. Um, area 1 is 3.89, multiply that by the distance to top. And because there are two L shapes, I'm going to multiply that by 2. The third part would be the transformed wood. Area is 1.2. Distance to top is 5. And I'm going to divide that by the sum of the areas. And that would give us 1.42 inches to the top of the section. Moment of inertia is sum of moment of inertia about the centroid, or I sub C plus A D squared. We have determined I sub C. We have determined area. The only parameter that we need to determine would be D value. So first, let me write down the area for these two parts. D is simply y bar minus y sub i. So D1 would be y bar, which is 1.42, minus distance of that steel part to the top, and that would give us 0 0.553 inches. D2 would be y bar minus y2, and that would give us negative 3.58 inches. Now I'm going to plug all of those into that equation and determine the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis and that would be 33.46 inch to the fourth. Now we get to another part, which is again tricky. I need to determine what is the maximum force P that could be carried by this beam. In order to do that, we need to determine the bending stress, which is MC over I, and make sure that this bending stress is smaller than the allowable stress. But this is a composite beam. We have two materials, and we need to make sure that that stress is going to be limited to the values that are given in steel and wood. Let's determine stress in steel first, and after that we will go and talk about stress in wood. For stress in steel, we have this equation, mc over i. m is calculated to be 45p. For c value, what should I use? What is the c value that I need to use for this problem? Again, I'm going to pause here for a few seconds. Think about this and tell me what is the right answer. C is the farthest distance of the material that we are working on from the centroid. What is the farthest distance of steel from the centroid? Is it Y bar? No, not in this case. Because the distance of steel to the top, or Y bar, is 1.42 inch. What is the height of this section? 
3 inches, and that means that the distance to the bottom part of the seal is 1.58. That is a little bit higher than the distance to the top, but that would be more critical, so I'm going to use that, 1.58 inches. Divided by I, and set that would give us 2.12 P. This stress should be limited to the allowable stress in steel, which is given to be 16 KSI, or 16,000 PSI. I'm going to solve this for P, and we get 7530 pound as the maximum force that this beam can take before stress in steel is exceeding the limiting value. For determining stress in wood, we have the same equation, MC over I. But we should not forget the N factor because this is the section that has been transformed. So I'm going to multiply that by N. M is 45P. What is the C value for wood? Again, that would be the farthest distance of wood from the centroid. Is it the distance to the top or to the bottom? To the bottom. That would be height of that section, or h, minus y bar. So that would be 8.58. That is shown by red in this figure. So I'm going to plug that n and divide it by moment of inertia, multiply by n, and set that smaller than allowable stress in wood, which is 1.3 ksi. From that, we can solve it for P, and that would give us 1880 pound as the limiting force if we want to make sure that stress in wood is not exceeding that allowable stress. So we got two values for this case. What would be the final answer? What is the maximum load that this beam can take? The minimum of these two values. So that would be 1880 pound final answer of this problem. All right. I hope you have a good weekend.